Welcome back to the 3n plus 1 conjecture. Start with any number. If it's even, cut it in half. If it's odd, multiply by 3 and add 1 and divide by 2. Then repeat. Does every number go to 1? Nobody knows. 1003 goes to 1. But maybe there's some number that loops back on itself and never gets to 1. If we have a specific operation sequence, like a half followed by 3n plus 1 over 2, then we can compose the operations like this. First take a half, then multiply the result by 3, add 1, and divide by 2. Now, we want to know which number makes a loop, so we solve for m equals that. It's easy 8th grade math, and we get m equals 2. Sure enough, if we start with 2, divided in half, we get 1, then 3n plus 1 over 2, and we get 2 back again. This is totally automatic, but we don't want a loop involving 1. Okay, here's another operation sequence. A half, followed by a half, followed by 3n plus 1 over 2. If we put in m, we get this out. And solving for m, we get m equals 4 fifths. Sure enough, 4 fifths goes to 2 fifths, goes to 1 fifth, then goes back to 4 fifths. But fractions are yuck. In fact, for almost any operation sequence we choose, our loop is going to come out with fractions. So let's change the operation sequence. Let's make it 3n plus 1 over 2, 3n plus 1 over 2, and then a half. Solving for m this time, we get negative 5. Well, negative numbers are also yuck. Finally, let's look for a 5n plus 1 loop with this operation sequence. Okay, now solving for m in the same way, we're going to get m equals 26. Hey, so this is great. We found an integer loop for the 5n plus 1 problem, and it goes like this. Okay, can we find a loop for the 3n plus 1 problem? If only we could guess in advance which operation sequence is most likely to have an integer solution, and it turns out we can. The general formula for composing operation sequences and solving for m is pretty disgusting. So instead of that, I built a little analog computer for us. This computer is for lengths, uh, loops of length 11. So let's call the loop length k, so k equals 11. Now I can arrange the operation sequence by putting down these little 3n plus 1 over 2 pieces and moving them around. Let's call the number of pieces x, so x equals 7. Okay. So now I have an operation sequence. What number m, if I put it on the left-hand side of these operations, will make the same number m pop out on the right side? This computer will tell us. Here's how to calculate that m. We multiply increasing powers of 2 with decreasing powers of 3, sum them, and get out a number we'll call beta. To get m, we're going to divide beta by 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, which here is 2 to the 11th minus 3 to the 7th, or negative 139. Trust me, I built this computer very carefully, and it operates correctly. Now, if beta is divisible by 139, then we've got a valid loop of integers because m is an integer. If it's some fraction instead, then we can move the pieces around and try again. No, nope, again, it's not an integer. So notice that no matter how we arrange the pieces, though, the denominator 2 to the k minus 3 to the x equals negative 139 is the same. So all we've got to do is find a beta that's a multiple of 139. And the chance of that is 1 over 139. But if we keep moving the pieces around, we might hit a good beta. Okay, that's a computer for loop length 11, k equals 11. Let's move to a smaller computer for loop length 2, k equals 2. If I put down one piece, then that's x equals 1, so k equals 2, x equals 1. Now 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is 4 minus 3 equals 1. Wow, no matter what integer beta comes out now, it'll still be an integer when we divide it by 1. Okay, let's try it. 2 to the 1 times 3 to the 0 equals 2 divided by 1, so m equals 2. We have a loop, so let's confirm it. m equals 2 divided in half is 1, and then 1 times 3 plus 1 over 2 is back to 2, so the loop is 2, 1, 2. Ha! So we just rediscovered the loop that involves 1, but we're looking for a loop that doesn't involve 1. So let's go back to the k equals 11 computer with x equals 7 pieces and 2 to the k minus 3 to the x equals negative 139. Well, if we keep moving the pieces around, what's the chance we'll generate a multiple of 139? For each configuration of pieces, we have a small chance. So how many configurations are there? There's 11 choose 7, which is 330, but we have to divide that by 11 because any shift of the pieces is just going to be the same loop. So even though we have a small 1 over 139 chance, we get 30 shots at it. So it seems like we've got about uh, 30 over 139 equals 19% chance of finding a valid loop of length 11. Now how about this k equals 12 computer with 8 pieces? There are 42 
ways to arrange those pieces and 2 to the k minus 3 dx is 2,000 something. So now there's only a 2% chance of finding an integer loop of length 12. That means if we're going to fool around with operation sequences, it would be better to play with the k equals 11 computer where we have a 19% chance of success. And in fact, if we set the pieces just like this, we get beta equals 2363, which is divisible by 139, and m equals negative 17. So we found another 3n plus 1 loop. This one starts at negative 17, so negative 17 doesn't go to 1. Of course, it's yet another negative loop. But that's okay, because now we have the key to our search. We want to pick k, the loop length, and x, the number of 3n plus 1 operations, so that the difference, 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, is very small. If it's extremely small, like 1, then it doesn't matter how we arrange the pieces because everything's a multiple of 1 and every loop is going to be an integer loop. If it's small like 5, then we can still get lucky pretty easily since lots of numbers are divisible by 5. Okay, let's look at the same thing for 5n plus 1 problem. To make 2 to the k minus 5 to, to the x very small, we can set k equals 7 and x equals 3. And 128 minus 125 is only 3. So it's really weird that this power of 2 is so close to this power of 5. And how many loops can we make with these pieces? Turns out we can make 5 different loops. And each of the 5 loops now has a pretty good chance of being a multiple of 3. And in fact, 2 of them are. So here are 2 loops uh, for the 5n plus 1 problem, including one that we found accidentally earlier. And the reason there's so many loops here of length uh, 7 is because these numbers are so close to each other. So let's keep looking for 3n plus 1 loops. And whenever 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is very small, we might find a 3n plus 1 loop. In other words, if we can find a 2 to the k that's very close to some 3 to the x, our chances are very good. So we're really reducing this to a pretty simple mathematical exploration. Okay, so let's keep going. Stay tuned. See you next time.